Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, a treat especial. Now, fair warning, this is extremely ill-advised. This is a variable displacement piston pump. It's got a lot of gravity in it, and you are looking at roughly 5,000 bucks. I really want to thank the patrons of this channel. It's awesome. We don't have to do any corpo shell vids. We don't got to do any bullshit. It's extremely extremely satisfying when the likes of well anyway some corpo sponsor comes along and says hey will you do this for us uh we can just tell them to fuck right off it's uh yeah <sighs> patrons thank you very much it's because you thank a patron if you are watching this on youtube so prior to it being sacrificed on the altar of the hydraulic bartending robot we are going to take it apart for your edification and viewing pleasure and what we here have is a sour Dan Foss, a 30 cc's per rev, made in Slovakia. This is the counter, the other part of Czechoslovakia. It got broken into uh, Czech Republic after the Iron Curtain lifted. It got Czech, Czech Republic and Slovakia. Uh, both of those places do not go out drinking unless you got a good buddy with you or three. And uh, don't smile. Don't smile too much. They'll think you're an idiot. Other than that, and the long-tailed beast that was uh, Soviet republics or Soviet the Soviet era, anyway, a lovely spot to be. But enough about that. So you metric fanboys can begin the gnashing of teeth and the and the wailing, even though this is a metric pump. Well, it's actually a standard pump. So this looks to be uh, SAE Society of Automotive Engineers. Yeah, this is a B, two bolt. So this is uh, 13 spline that'll be 16 30 seconds yeah that's right you love it you love it so even though it's rated in cc's everything about it is mounted in inches these likely be uh, o-ring boss so these would be sae ports as well with non-metric thread form so inch thread form as well haha -ha, eat that uh, yeah, just to confirm, that is uh, O-ring boss fitting. You can see there's a chamfer in there, a little, little spot for the O-ring to, to seat in there. And the keen eye amongst us will note that this is a load sense, pressure compensated. Uh, we may or may not get to that. It's yeah, it's the control system, but essentially the control system controls the swash plate. Well, it controls the swash plate servo. Yeah, we'll get into her. <laughs> I feel for you. Just like everything, the lingo is half the battle. Now, are those made up words? Am I making up those words? No, I'm not making up those words. However, I will remind you that all words are made up. Release the schmoo! Brand new. There's the basal platen. That's the back of her. Can you tell which way is inlet and which way is outlet? That is right. Inlet. Because it's bigger. The bearing race here. Nice big uh, tapered roller bearing. Tapered roller bearings are real good at taking axial thrust. So something's going on here that has, yeah, you guessed it, axial thrust. A little dash pot piston of some sort. Oh, that must be just a preload. The manifold, the back of the manifold. Now look at the back of this manifold bearing plate. It's steel, but then it's been built up with uh, bronze. Now some would say brass. It, it does have a little bit of a red tint to it, but this would be uh, phosphor bronze. It's a bearing material. It's a lot. Uh, it's a little more stiff than bronze, but uh, stands up better. Just the Buna N. That's a butylene rubber compound. That's just a nice big O-ring. And you can see this bearing back plate here is indexed by a little roll pin right there. Sits right in there. And then it's preloaded by this dash pot piston. To make sure that it's abutted nice and tight up against the body of the pump itself. I guess that would be the cylinder. And here in the back, this is the control servo 
and this is what goes in and out to control the swash plate angle. We'll get to that. Here we have the pump body itself. This would be a Viton O-ring. Different material. This is a higher temp. Higher temp capable. A little bit stiffer. Yeah, quite a bit stiffer shore hardness. More robust. Now why they would... Oh. Put a little ding in that. That's no fucking good. So, there we go. Casualty number one. Got to get a new one of those. Shit. That was really careless. That actually is uh, silicon. Silicone. Alright, we're early on here, but here is the money shot. This, <laughs> yeah. So, we'll take this bearing off, set it aside. See if I can get this whole thing out actually. Probably be be a lot nicer to look at. If we can. That's gotta come out. Okay, there we go. At least we can see it now. Okay, you ready for this? Here are the pumping elements and the cylinder that the pumping elements go into. Remember, this is a variable displacement piston pump. That's what does the job there. There's the swash plate. That's the shaft of the pump. There's the swash plate preload spring. Nice big front bearing. Well, here's the shaft. There's a bearing on there and a bearing race in the housing. And the input power goes into this spline shaft, it goes through the shaft, it gets supported by the bearing, and then indexes on here, and this turns this pumping element. So this whole thing turns. Okay, you got that? Now, the swash plate, the swash plate goes into the case, and it's actuated by this spring and the piston on the back side that I put away. So at startup, it's always in full stroke because the, the spring pushes it and that, that servo that actuates this needs to have pressure, hydraulic pressure in order to actually actuate it. So here we have a nice big bearing surface and we have some UHMW or looks like actually Teflon bearings inside the case. So that allows this to move back and forth, okay. As this is turning, depending on the swash plate angle, these pistons can go in further or out further. So if it's at 90 degrees to this cylinder, you get no flow because nothing's pumping. But if you tweak it right over, you get max flow because these are just like hypodermic cylinders or hypodermic needles in and out in and out so all these cylinders come out just like that and you can see these are finely finely polished and there's a hip joint there's a ball and socket joint and then these are called slippers these would be bronze slippers same same material as um, the bronze bushing at the back there for the that would be the manifold and essentially what happens is the shaft turns this and these slippers you see they have little holes in them that is to allow fluid hydraulic fluid to pressurize this gallery in here so that the slippers actually are running not on steel but on a cushion of pressurized oil and essentially all it does is oil comes in the backside, gets sucked in. So when the piston is moving out, the oil comes in. And when the piston is moving in, the oil goes out. Of course, this is turning. So necessarily, as it completes 360 degrees of revolution, this has gone in and out one time. And that is how it pumps oil. 
not much to it really just this gets turned of course abuts this and uh, oil goes in oil comes out now these pistons unlike the pistons in a car or the pistons in a hydraulic cylinder there's no seal none whatsoever the reason these pumps cost so much is because the clearance on these is critical now they have to be perfectly sized so that they slide properly but the clearance is so low that the viscosity of the oil itself is what provides the sealing. Now if we look at the cylinder, the turning element here, we see there's a big monster spring retained by a circlip. And that monster spring bears on these three what I called index pins. They're not actually index pins. They provide the preload for this hemispherical bearing that preloads this, this race that preloads the slippers on the swash plate. Now the interesting thing about this type of pump is that it's a flooded case because these need oil in order to work. There's designed leakage. So you can check the state of the pump by getting it up to temperature, getting the oil up to temperature, and then you check the amount of flow coming out of the case drain. And that is, that case drain flow is what's leaking through this whole thing. So if we know that the leakage is too high, there'll be a spec in the manual, say four liters a minute, 10 liters a minute. If it's higher than that, we know that the pump is worn and we can replace it. So it's a very handy troubleshooting tool to check the case drain flow. Okay, as I said, the amount that this chooches back and forth determines the displacement of the pump. So it's variable depending on if it's 90 degrees to this pumping element or, or canned right over. And this controls, of course, that cam. So what controls this swash plate? Well, there's this preload spring that forces it up into the neutral position, but then there's also a, a spring in the dash pot, in the servo, and I'll pull that back and we'll have a look at the control system that controls the output of this pump. So this is the pistone, the servo pistone, that bears on the swash plate. In actual fact, she who must be obeyed has come down into the empire of dirt and told me that I am out of time. So we are going to look at the load sense and the pressure compensation circuit in a next video. These are essentially, you know, fuck, I'm a busy man. I got shit to do. <laughs> These are essentially uh, hydraulic computers. We'll also, hopefully if I can find it, we'll also look at horsepower limiting and torque limiting uh, valving. It's all, instead of ones and zeros, it's hot, wet oil doing the calculations it's kind of fucking mind-blowing so uh, stay tuned for that and in the interim hey thanks a lot for watching keep your dick in a vice slovakian schmoo is disgusting fucking best keep that under wraps <laughs> fuck release the schmoo even a moose gets laid once a year